run, but I can't stop running because you're not going to do it. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dreams just because somebody in your life is chasing you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life is chasing you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. Good morning. Hello, everybody. We slide the board across there. Uh, welcome to today's edition of English Live. And today we are doing another of the fabulous vocabulary stretcher lessons. So this is where I introduce um, between six and seven words and um, we practice how to use them. We explore definitions and um, hopefully you'll go away from this lesson today um, being able to sound even more smart than you already do. Um, but first things first. So if you are new to English Live or if you haven't been here for a while or you just need reminding, you can download a document that looks like this from the English Live Resources Facebook page, Facebook group. And um, there are six different activities for you to do after the lesson to extend and consolidate your learning. And there's some really fun um, ones today. I'm really enjoying the creativity coming up with all these crazy tasks for you to do. And it's also the place where you can upload any photos or videos of the work that you do um, to share with other learners and share with the world. I absolutely love going on there every evening and having a look at the work you've done. Um, you're all fabulous. So well done to you. Let's have a few shout outs before we get on with our starter activity. So let's see. April, um, as in mummy English, she's been very busy today pulling out names from the live chat. <coughs> Excuse me. So shout out to Florence. Hello to Joseph and Isabel in Wallington. Hello and a big shout out to Archie. Hello to Ellie in Barwell. Hello to Neil, who is eight in Chelmsford. Hello to Neve, who is seven in Sutton. Hello to Lucy and Ollie in Cambridge. Erin Small, who is 10 in Warwickshire. Hello to Tilly in Liverpool, as always. Hello, Tilly. Um, Finley in Lincoln. Hi to Immy. Hi, Immy. Hello to Dash, who is seven, who never misses a single lesson. Well done, Dash. Um, hello to Freddie, Tunbridge, Freddie in Tunbridge Wells, um, who's been here since the very beginning. Thank you so much, Freddie. I hope you really enjoyed these series of lessons. And hello to Martha in Hemel Hempstead. And a shout out to Maddie, who is 11 in Southport. Evie, who is seven in Cheshire. Um, Robbie, who loves my lessons. Hello to uh, Nicola. 
Um, Alice's last lesson today as she goes back to school tomorrow. Alice, I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a good one. And um, hello to Lottie in Hitchin who did the Zoom meeting. Hi, Lottie. Hello. And uh, Ava, who's 10 in Hertfordshire, and Bethan and James. So big hello to all of you. And thank you very much for joining me today. Now, if you are going back to school tomorrow or later in the week, you're going to have an absolutely fabulous time. It's going to be wonderful to see your teachers and some of your friends. Um, but if you want to and you've really loved doing English, these lessons are still available for catch up on YouTube. So you're welcome to do them whenever you like. There's only two weeks left. Um, but they will be available after those two weeks or throughout the summer holidays and forever. So you can always come back to them. Right. Starter activity. So let's get our brains moving today. I've got a great one for you today. Let me slide my um, very, very stable board into shot. Get these off. So I've got two new words for you. You may know what they mean, you may not. I'm hoping you don't. Um, boondoggle and flummoxed. I would like you to come up with your own definition for one or both of these words. Um, you can shout it out at the screen, jot it down on the page, pop it in the live chat, discuss it with your siblings or adults, entirely up to you. But I'd like you to come up with your own definition. And if you do know what the word means, then come up with a, an accurate definition for the word, okay? Good luck. Play. There we go. that they're flummoxed. Someone's saying they know what boon <laughs> boondoggle means. Someone said it means wriggling with a baboon on your head. Great idea. <laughs> Very creative. Someone else thinks boondoggle is a type of animal, like Bertie. Lou, well done for your definition of flummoxed. <laughs> You're all hilarious. This is brilliant. Well done. The only downside to teaching these lessons to you all is that I can't spend um, hours in a classroom with you all hearing your brilliant ideas and I just get a few moments of seeing them come through on the live uh, on the live chat. Um, but some really great ideas in there. Well done, everybody. So I'm going to give you the definitions now. In fact, I'm going to take this down before I try and pop pages up and then drop pages and look very unprofessional. So, um, boondoggle. 
an activity that appears to be useful, but is in fact a waste of valuable time. Hmm, moondoggle. And flummoxed, and I expect some of you have heard this word before, it's a feeling of um, feeling bewildered or confused or perplexed. And with an ED on the end, it's an adjective, but you can flummox somebody, and in that sense, it would be a verb. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do now is to quickly come up with a sentence for one or both of these, using them in the correct way. OK, um, I'm going to try and think of one on the spot as well. I'm going to pop the music on for 30 seconds um, and I'll have a look in the live chat and see if anybody comes up with a good one there. OK, good luck. Play. So you're creating a sentence for each of these words, using them properly with their real definition. Lots of you are using flummoxed brilliantly and perfectly, so uh, well done for that. Boondoggle. Um, cleaning up after Bertie is a is a complete boondoggle. There's my example. Complete cleaning up after Bertie is completely pointless because he just messes everything up again straight away. So it is a waste of my valuable valuable time. Um, and flummoxed. Um, I woke up yesterday morning feeling flummoxed because I thought I had missed teaching a lesson. True story. Uh, OK, so let's move on to our next activity. So we've got boondoggle and flummoxed and we're going to bank those. We might come back to them at the end of the lesson if we've got time. So three more words. Ubiquitous, capricious and nefarious. So I'm going to pop these in here. Actually, I'm going to put them on that side. And I've got three definitions for you, and I'd like you to try and match them up. You might, if you're a quick writer, you might want to jot them down. I've done really short definitions to make it um, as simple as possible for us to do this. Um, or you might just want to shout out the screen or just use your brain a little bit to try and match them up. And I'll give you the answers in about 30 seconds. Play. <laughs> Pause. 
Okay, let's see how well you did. Now, I'm not expecting you to already know what these words mean. Um, I'm hoping that you might think about other words that you know what they mean and um, similar words. And um, you might use your brain to try and piece that information together and um, make a decision that way. But if you do already know what they mean, then congratulations, that's fabulous. So, extremely villainous or evil. Nefarious. Moody and unpredictable. Capricious. Oh, that's going to get confusing. Can you see that? Yeah. And found everywhere. Well, there's only one option left. Ubiquitous. So well done if you got those correct. Sorry that my pen is running out. That's what happens when you have toddlers that take pen lids off and leave pens lying around to dry out. Okay, so uh, now that we know what they mean, I'm gonna test how well you've retained that information by asking you to put one of these words into each of these three sentences, okay? So I'll read them out and then I'll bring it closer to you so you can see it clearly yourself. So the first one, if you take time to look, you'll see love is blank. The blank actions of criminals are widely reported. She was a blank girl, often misunderstood by her peers. Okay, so uh, you've got a choice of the three words that we've just learned, and um, I'd like you to pop those words into the sentences. You can jot them down or you can just shout out at the screen or, or any of the other ways in which uh, you participate. That's absolutely fine. Um, but do remember, if you are going to try and bank these new words into your personal word bank, make sure that you um, have a way of remembering them. So you might need to jot them down um, so that you can use them later on in the day. Okay, right. Play. Good luck. <laughs> time this should be an E. Okay. It's live. <laughs> if we've got these correct. Have I got a better black pen? I have to stick with this one. Uh, if you take time to look around, you'll see love is, oh, it's really not working now, <laughs> ubiquitous. Love can be found everywhere. Um, the nefarious actions, see if you can see it with this red pen. I think you can. The nefarious actions of criminals are widely reported, and she was a capricious girl, 
often misunderstood by her peers. Okay, so well done if you got those three words right. And now you can just safely tuck that away in your personal uh, word bank and you can pick those words out and use them later today and throughout the rest of the week to make yourself sound super smart. Okay, uh, let's have a few shout outs because I can hear the messages from uh, Mummy English racing through. So, she's also corrected my spelling. She's very good at spellings. Uh, okay, uh, hello to um, Anna, who is nine, who would like a shout out. Hello to you. Um, Theo, who is nine. Adam, um, Adam Frost says hi. Hello, Adam Frost. Uh, Amelia, who is nine. Hello to you. Hello to Jess and Jack. Uh, hello to Matthew Baker from Welton Primary School in East Yorkshire and all of your friends in your primary school. And hello to Jack Lacey in Reading and to Cara, who is eight, and Dylan, who is 10. Big shout out to you. Hello to Arjun in St Albans and William, who is nine, and Samuel, who is 11. Um, John T in Portsmouth, it's his first lesson. Welcome, John T. I hope you enjoy it today. Emily in Pittsburgh from Pittsburgh loves my lessons. Thank you very much, Emily, and thank you for joining me. Uh, Lucas, who is 10 in Bournemouth, shout out to you. Hello to James Rickson's brother. Um, oh, he would like James Rickson would like a shout out for his brother. <laughs> there you go. And um Mummy English picked out a sentence with boondoggle that she particularly liked, and that was, crochet is boondoggle, but my granddad thinks it's fun. Lovely. I like that sentence too. If that was your sentence, well done. Give yourself one of those. Give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, where are we at? We are racing through this lesson today. So, I'd like to introduce to you another word. This one you may have heard before. You might know what it means, you might not. But I'm gonna give you the definition straight away this time. So the word we're going to look at is cajole, okay? It's a verb. It means to persuade, um, especially by flattery or false promises. Um, so you can cajole some, you could cajole your friends into completing your homework for you, for example. Uh, so what I'm going to ask you to do, though, is to try and think of some synonyms. This is tricky. OK, I could have picked an easier word where you would be able to come up with plentiful, um, plentiful choices for synonyms. Um, but this is tricky. But I think now at this stage, you've got your brain working. I think you might be able to come up with the goods. OK, you can pop them in the live chat, drop them down, shout them out of the screen discuss it with your siblings or your parents, or you could just have a little boogie around if you'd rather, and then you can get the answers from me afterwards. Okay, here we go. Play. <laughs> They will be removed. So, bribe, that's a really good idea. Manipulate, really good. Coax, tantalize, maybe. Um, bribery. Coax. 
coax, bribe, encourage, really good. Beg, manipulate. Well done, Karen. Well done, Rachel. Hello to Leo in Norfolk. Weedle, somebody using a thesaurus. <laughs> Okay, fabulous, good. Pause. Okay, um, you, I think you've come up with pretty much all of the ones that I did before the lesson. So the synonyms I came up with are coax, encourage, sweet talk, I didn't see that one in there, um, weasel, beg, entice, coerce, and oblige. Now, I just saw some what is a synonym? Well, a synonym is a word that has almost the same meaning. It's just an alternative word that you could use, okay? And um, that's what a thesaurus can be used for, for, for finding lots of alternative words. So you don't need to use our boring words like happy or sad or big or small. You could come up with something much more interesting that maybe gives the reader a bit more of a specific um some specific information about what you're talking about rather than being quite vague and general. So, last task. <laughs> Gosh, these lessons fly by, I must be having lots of fun. So these are the six words that we've covered today, okay? I spelt it correctly here. <laughs> Uh, nefarious, uh, flummoxed, ubiquitous, boondoggle, cajole and capricious. OK, you've got a choice of two different things you can do. You can pick out your favourite word and come up with a really interesting sentence that uses it or a number of different sentences that uses that word. Or you can challenge yourself to write a sentence that includes as many of those six words as possible. OK, so two different options, lots of different ways to play. Get involved. Good luck. Play. Abby says that she's just joined and there's only four minutes left. It's fine, Abby. This is available on Catch Up. You can watch it from the beginning afterwards. You haven't missed anything. Yes, Fran, I agree. It's a great word. Ubiquitous. Eva, arguing with my sister is boondoggle. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I have the same with my sister. to uh, those of you that popped your examples in the live chat and to all of you at home that are not using the live chat I'm sure you're coming up with lots of fabulous yeah. examples and um, you're really going to be able to use those words in your everyday life and sound super smart now lots of you were asking for Bertie I just had to whiz out to the garden and um, <laughs> and try and uh, cajole him into the house with a little bit of um, a toast crust so you can have this in a moment Bertie once you sit later everybody if you're new to English Live, Bertie is my dog and he's the, completely the star of the show. Right, Bertie, come say hello to everyone. <laughs> he is. Um, so well done for all your hard work today. Remember, we've got the rest of this week and ooh, 
Thank you, Bertie. And we've got all of next week before I finish the daily live lessons. But in two weeks' time, I will be launching my weekly vlog, Chapter and Verse, that will look at all things English. It's going to be really fun and exciting. So hopefully you'll be able to join me and Bertie for, for that. Right, I'm going to pop you down now because you're so heavy and stinky. There we go. Okay, so uh, tomorrow I've got a great lesson on flash fiction. It's part one and part two will be the following week. So um, lots of uh, great tasks related to that as well that will really challenge how you structure your sentences. And on Wednesday, a fantastic lesson about Shakespeare's Globe and um, a little fundraiser in that as well. So <laughs> thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Bye-bye.